Hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind, in your hands. One of those words they don't translate correctly. And, uh, you know, these, I've been doing this for like, oh, maybe uh, this eliminating money idea for such a long time, I can't even remember. And I gathered all these quotes. I, I was like 24 years old, so it's been a long time ago since I've done this. And I have uh, put these quotations together to show you that the whole problem in the world is caused by money. And a lot of famous people have discovered that. And coincidentally, the mark of the beast is money. And they don't translate the word karagma correctly. You can see in this unabridged Greek-English lexicon that it means the impress on a coin or stamp money coin. And I got the Wikipedia article on the number of the beast to correctly explain what this is, but still a lot of people think it's an RFD chip or something else. But, you know, the whole reason why this world is so screwed up is because of money. And, um, you know, this gasoline engines and polluting the world and causing global warming, it could actually cause us to become extinct. But... Um, the money is the whole cause of the problems because, um, you know, we could have had trolleys. You know, it would have been more economical than to build all these cars. And what do we need all these jobs for? You know, people commute, um, you know, they could have, you know, they moved out to the suburbs. But if money was not the incentive, we could have had these, what Dr. Nissen Utopia talks about, these arcologies, which would be like self-sustaining uh, communities that um, would have their own industries. And you think think a lot of the manufactured things in this world are totally unnecessary, and there's very few people that are actually producing clothes and um, fabric. You know, we could make our own clothes. And so there's only like a million farmers, and um, um, a lot of the farms are growing corn to feed the pigs and cows. And the pigs and cows create methane, which is a um, much more potent greenhouse gas than the CO2. And so they're, they're starting to mention this. You know, they had the International Climate Change Report come out. And then the United States has its own climate change report. And this came out Wednesday. They have a, it's kind of a deceitful picture, but it was on the front page. And they show... Um, Hibbing, Minnesota, has an increase of um, three degrees. And um, this red area is basically greater than two degrees warmer. So the only places that are actually cooler are down, down in that area. But it's deceitful because they don't show Alaska. And like Alaska, I think they even tell you in one of these articles that Alaska and Siberia has gone up a, a whole lot more. I don't know if I have this in here, but um, the, the word starting to get out. There was a, another University of Arizona professor on KUAT the other day that was studying uh, in Sweden the peat moss, and she was saying that in 100 years from now, there won't be any permafrost anymore. And if that's the case... I mean, I think she realizes <clears throat> that if there's no permafrost, then there's not going to be any, um, the atmosphere is going to be like such high with greenhouse gases because the permafrost is being, uh, creating methane from these organisms they have up there. And that's what she was studying. And they produce methane when they make this peat decay. Or, and so then then the temperatures well they're even saying here that by the end of um the twenty first century that there's going to be um, um the um the temperatures ten degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it is here it is yeah, it's in this article let's say summers are gonna be longer and hotter, and um rains are gonna come down harder. And this, these are like dire warnings. That's what it says in this. And like um, large parts of, oh yeah, and like for this past 
week or so, it seems like the lead story on the news is some horrible tornadoes or or drenching rains like Pensacola, Florida had like two feet of rain in 24 hours and it caused a lot of flooding and Baltimore got a good soaking and roads started caving in and people's basements got flooded but it's just you know because the worst part about it though is is so many people don't don't even believe this global warming and there's a pretty good chart they had here I here it is it shows you what kind of people don't believe in global warming and uh, let's see uh, basically um, well you can see here that um, overall 44 percent believe that it's man-made global warming <clears throat> and these people they think it's natural you know and um, but then you can see the difference between republicans only 24 percent of republicans think global warming is uh and human activity and then um, down here the democrats but uh and the tea party look at that 70 percent of these people in the tea party don't believe that you know they think global warming's a hoax and there's even you know some like some states in america where the people are running for governor or or senate or something you know they don't believe that humans are causing us global warming but you can like the, these charts that um, they publish can you can just look at them you know and I wanted to ask Dr. McPherson he was editing a book he used to teach at the University of Arizona and he was editing a book on uh, climate change and he s suddenly realized that that we're going to become extinct so I'm wondering if maybe he was looking at a graph like this. Let's see if I can zoom out here. Whoops, that's in. Uh, I need to get a smaller one. Well, there you go. That gets in there pretty good. But and you can see how this this gray line is the temperature, and then this is the CO2 levels. Down here is an ice age, and then these are our warming periods. And it doesn't stay warm that long, but it does kind of fluctuate and go down but and I'm thinking that unfortunately they don't show you know how many degrees temperature that is up or down um, top right they say down here Chicago would be under a mile of ice and um, but you can like the co2 has just gone up and if you know this temperature, it's supposed to lag like 40 years behind. So if we've gone, I mean, if down here is an ice age, and then then right around here is where it's mostly been before the industrial age, it's been around 200. So like, there's 200, and we're on, we're at 400 now. This is an old book. We're at 400, so we've doubled that, and then so. You can kind of figure it's really messed up. And I think maybe that's why Dr. McPherson came to realize that that we could become extinct like in 30 years. And they don't really want to cause panic or anything. But um, they are preparing for this. I saw that the Pentagon has a special program to prevent riots during uh, climate catastrophe. Like in another one of these articles, they're saying Florida is really, you know, that's really a bad place to be because, um, you know, they're so close to sea level there. And um, where did I put that article? But, um, yeah, then they said trillions of dollars. That's kind of what I wanted to show you. Oh, I can't believe I don't... Oh, is this it? It's probably in the same article. Yes, it is. It was in that same article about the uh, uh, that chart in there, but um, Florida. This was in in was it Thursdays, but as they say, sea levels have risen eight inches since 1870, and they're expecting up to two feet by 2060. And then they're talking about trillions of dollars. You know, they're going to have to move their 
they said they're going to move their sewers. And, um, you know, it's just the infrastructure. It's already flooding here. But so, you know, it's just like so crazy. And then, like a lot of these people, this in, in the front page, well, that wasn't the front page, but it was in this New York Times magazine. They had a big article about this guy. He used to be like an Earth First kind of person. And he, um, it's a big article. It's a full couple of pages. But he's one of these people that come to realize that this um, climate is really much worse than they're saying it is. And he's taken his daughter and wife up to, uh, I don't know, is it up in Scotland or someplace to um, live the rest of his life because he just thinks that it's the end of the world as we know it and he feels fine. And so he says, then they say down here, after decades of fervent environmental activism, Paul Kings North decided it's too late. Collapse is inevitable. So now what? And uh, I mean, this is getting into the this climate collapse is getting into mainstream articles. You know, people are reading this, and there was a lot of comments about this, uh, and they came out later. The next week, they came out with um, the comments, and I'll read them to you in a second here. But let's just see if I underlined anything in this. Just, But like I'm saying, this guy, I'm not sure he explains in here how he came to realize that, you know, maybe he saw a graph just like that, that he realizes that it's not sustainable. You know, it's like, um, you know, I used to think that, that, you know, maybe some little pockets of people could survive. But like... Um, the problem is the fluctuations, you know, the like Tucson had a real warm winter and then they could have, if there's any days where it gets like over 130 or 135, I think it is, it'll kill the plants. So, and um, then, then there won't, like Kansas was um, over 100 degrees just a few days ago. They they got a hundred degrees faster than we did down here in Tucson, so anyway, I was telling you, okay, the next um, week they came out with a little survey about that article, and I think it's kind of interesting. The, the analytics is doomsday coming, and uh, these are readers' reactions. Uh, Look, forty-six percent of the people who read read the article or responded think we're doomed. I wonder how many people responded. But well, that's pretty good. But and then here, eight percent think people have been crying wolf too long. Then eight percent still think there's a chance that we can stop things by having population control. But and then here's eleven percent. That's a good answer. Humans will go extinct, but the earth will go on without us. And then here is um, King's North's attitude is irresponsible. We can still save the planet. So those are all pretty good answers. You know, some people still think we can save the planet. You know, I mean, but like, the only way we could do it would be to, like, st stop industrial civilization. And Dr. McPherson, I believe, he thought that for a while, that, well, a lot of people thought that we'd run out of oil first, but there's other things we can burn, too. You know, we could burn coal, and we can burn this, um, we're starting to do it now, those tar sands. So there's so much carbon, and if we just keep burning it, it doesn't look like we're going to stop. I mean, you look at China, and they had articles. I didn't cut any out, but they, I saw a few just, you know, over the my periods of reading the papers of the air in China, it's like a fog almost. You can't see anything when these people are breathing that, you know, and uh, and it's certainly causing um, climate change. You know, you can just imagine what it's doing to the sun and the rain and 
and everything else, all this pollution in the air. And um, so we haven't been taking good care of this planet. And like I thought, you know, when I was younger, that that somebody could save the world. You know, a messiah could maybe convince everybody that we have to eliminate money and, um, you know, live a rational life. You know, if it's not rational, then it's not, not of God. It's another one of those words they don't translate correctly. The word logos, it means logic. And they, it means, um, it's in the book of the New Testament, book of John, and they say that in the beginning was the word, but um, they don't translate it correctly. It it should be logic. There it is again. But uh, so, like, if we lived a logical lifestyle, you would figure we wouldn't have money. It's, money is what causes all these problems. They have these people on Wall Street that are just playing these funny money games and not really producing anything. I got an article here. These people that run these hedge funds with the, this high-speed trading. They're the richest people. They're, they're one person. There's a really good chart. Somebody had a, I don't know, well, I didn't bring it with me because I didn't think it was that important. But, I mean, you get the point here. These people have so much money, and they're just playing games with, you know, money. And money does such horrible things, like some guy is suing me trying to steal these lots, these vacant lots that I invested in uh, back a long time ago in like um, 1989. And, um, you know, I bought them real inexpensive, figuring somebody's going to come out there and start developing. And sure enough, they got, they started developing and they convinced us to join this HOA. And then they started billing us to put in the improvements and everything. But, um, you know, I thought it would be fair, you know, and we'd still make a profit on it. But what we should have done from the beginning is fought tooth and nail, let them have their HOA and build whatever they want, you know, and, and we'll just come along for the ride. We were here first, you know. So anyway, there, this guy, Mr. Russo, he's a, one of these ambulance-chasing attorneys here. Not only that, but he's on this Pima County Industrial Development Committee, along with Cecilia Cruz and Virginia Uran. And I really think that Mr. Russo is using um, these two women who are very politically active in Pima County here. <clears throat> like uh, Cecilia Cruz was the head of the Tucson Women's Commission, and Virginia Uran took Andy Nichols' uh, Senate seat here in the Arizona Senate. So Mr. Russo has this business where they lend money out under the authority of Pima County uh, to, they've lent some to some schools in Ohio that turned out to be those Turkish um, uh, funny schools. So, and then he gets a percentage of it. His law firm, uh, one of his attorneys that works there is like full-time involved in this, trying to get people to buy these bonds so, so that Mr. Russo can get rich. And um, for a while, Cecilia Cruz and Virginia Wyran was on these HOA boards. He appointed them to them for some reason or other, maybe to look good, because whatever they wanted, if they ever had to go before the Board of Supervisors, uh, they would do whatever Cecilia Cruz and Virginia Wyran asked. But um, I don't think, if they, if they knew what Russo was doing to me, I, I doubt they would want to associate with them, because... What Cecilia Cruz also does is she she's runs this SALT, it's a Southern Arizona Land Trust, and they help build houses for um, for people. But I, I don't know how that works. It's it's kind of sketchy, and Mr. Russo is involved in that too. So um, and not only that, but he's hired some of the people that um, were on the pro that were the prior majority lot owners out there at this HOA, and they ended up losing, they ended up causing the National Bank of Arizona to lose $35 million. And, you know, you wonder where all this money went. You know, this, uh, they got this loan from National Bank of Arizona to develop these lots out there near uh, 
Suarita and Houghton Road near that golf course, the Santa Rita golf course. And um, they just burned through all this money and never got anything off the ground hardly. They told us they were going to sell 300 lots every year, but um, the first year they didn't sell any lots, and the second year they only sold 50, and after that it, I think maybe another 50 or so, and and then they went went bankrupt. You know, where did all this money go? And um, so anyway, that's, I had this article in the New York Times the other day about how these construction firms um, steal all kinds of money. He says here, opportunities to steal and the incentives to cheat are so huge in construction that fraud has always threatened every single building project in our city. So it's like what they were doing, they, the, he, the general manager would tell the contractors to, to boost up the, the cost, you know, to, to take the contingency fund. And I remember when we were first starting this HOA business, they kept telling us, oh, we're going to have a contingency fund so that in case the costs overrun. And that's what happened. The costs overran. And, um, but I got, you know, uh, it's, they didn't, they didn't lose because the economy got bad. They just didn't know what they were doing. And this guy, Bob Bambauer, who uh, was the Tucson uh, manager for KB Homes, uh, came to our HOA meeting and told us we were being overcharged. It shouldn't cost, we, they shouldn't be charging us so much. It's just like this article here. You know, in New York, they, it's corrupt. And these, these guys, that these prior majority lot owners are being sued by a guy named Derry Dean Sparland Sr. He was like an 80-year-old man that um, stupidly invested with these prior majority lot owners. One of these prior majority lot owners almost assaulted me at one of the HOA meetings. He jumped up out of his chair and because uh, I was accusing him of flipping these lots to boost the value. I was like maybe back in 2004 or a little bit earlier maybe. And so they, uh, they were being sued by uh, Derry Dean Sparland Sr. for securities fraud. And um, we've got all these liens on our lots for this construction that was never finished. So my, I've been spending a hell of a lot of money to try to fight this here in Superior Court. These people are trying to steal this great investment I had, you know, that I had such high hopes on. I had building plans, and I was going to start developing them myself. But, you know, the fair thing to do now that I think about it is that they should have been able to build their roads and put in their sewers and everything else and do it to for us for free because because we were there first and so then uh, across the street in another subdivision that I have a vacant lot in around the golf course somebody went and put the um, electric and the, the um, um, water the electric and water in uh, the sewers a little bit harder to do but since these lots were created before, uh, I think it was like 68 or maybe 65, then um, we're allowed to put a septic on them. Uh, even if it's a real small lot, I put a septic on a lot here uh, that was basically um, like maybe 50 feet by 40 feet uh, out there in a bop off a of bop road. And I put like a two... Um, bedroom mobile home on it. So anyway, um, yeah, I made a good investment and Mr. Russo is trying to steal it from me with these crooked liens and there's really no evidence that he even or anybody paid any money for him. Like I said, these guys are experts in securities fraud and for some reason or other, the National Bank of Arizona never looked into their $35 million loss it's like maybe they were getting kickbacks. Like in China, I, there's a report that people over there, you know, they get a loan from the bank, and then, you know, for getting the loan, they give the, the, the people money on the bank, and, you know, it's all, you know, there's so much money involved in construction, and how are you supposed to know you're not being overcharged? Now, Mr. Russo recently put in 
um, maybe about 18, 1,800 feet of road with the sewer lids and curbs in one of these subdivisions, plus a little bit of flood control work. And um, so they are charging us um, $16,000 per lot, but and the whole thing cost seven hundred something thousand, seven hundred sixty thousand dollars to put in about eighteen hundred feet of of subdivision road. So it's just like you know, this, these are vacant. These are HOAs made up of vacant lots, and uh, and it's very strange. It's just it seems to go against public policy because who is? How are we supposed to know? how much it costs to put a road in. You can estimate how much it costs to put a roof on your house or 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 any kind of house, you know, or a swing pool, you know, by square footage, you can figure it out. But there's no real, I mean, there might be some people, I'm going to have to talk to maybe some people like Mr. Bambauer that are into subdivisions and would know, you know, based on the materials and labor and equipment and all this, basically how much it costs per square foot but there's also some other work they did but it's uh, anyway so they're it's a big racket and these people are trying to steal my assets and and it's it creates a lot of anxiety but here's an, an article that shows this is amazing how many people are in prison in the united states doing time and uh let's see here doing time and uh, it's just incredible. It's you know there's there's seven hundred and ten thousand people, number of prisoners. Oh no, this is per hundred thousand people. That's what it is. So for every hundred thousand people, there's seven hundred and ten in the United States in jail. But um, we're way ahead of all these other countries. And. Um, it kind of makes you wonder why. It's like, why are people in the United States so crazy? I mean, today on the news, they had a young man come into the Circle K, you know, and grabbed one of those dispensers for those lottery tickets and ran out of the store with it. And um, they were talking about people who grab beer and run out the store with it. And um, I guess maybe that's why they're... There's a lot of that happening, you know, and uh, just down the street from, from me today, uh, I'm in like the, well, they had a murder, and <clears throat> I didn't hear it. I was asleep. I went to bed early, and um, fortunately, I slept really well, but my roommate said that she heard this uh, noise, helicopters going around, and so this morning, I go down there, and well, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, what happened You know, near your house? And I said, I didn't hear anything. He says, yeah, there's somebody murdered down there. So I figured out, you know, looked on the Internet, and it was down the street. So I went down there, and they, uh, <clears throat> they're, well, they're saying now that they were having some kind of party in this house, and um, it happened um, like maybe 1030 at night. And this black man, I don't know if he's a basketball player or not. He didn't really look like one. And then these two other men, these they were Mexicans by their names, were shot. The black man shot these two Mexicans. And um, I think it was over drugs. So anyway, that's what happens around here. And um, and that's why the, you know, we've got so many people in prison here is because people are just so violent and crazy. You know, it's like, um, you know, and there's so many crazy drugs. And... Um, like these bath salts, you know, they really make people crazy. Well, here's another thing, you know, that's another reason why we have so many people in prison. Here's a chart that shows the uh, how it went up, you see, like back in the 1960s. And that was, I don't know, let's see, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yeah, so that's 10 years. So it went down in the 70s. There was very few people in prison. And then... Well, after the 70s, that's when all the heroin started coming in. You know, after um, the hippies with the LSD and smoking weed and peace and love, 
they flooded the ghettos. And after they killed Martin Luther King and, uh, and Bobby Kennedy, you see, they started flooding the, the heroin into the ghettos to pacify people. And, and so now we've got so many people. Yeah, that's probably what it is. It's this war on drugs. It's not necessarily all the, the horrible crime. And uh, so that's the way that looks there. That's, um, yeah, opiate, the opiate of the masses, which is this irrational religion. You know, this guy, St. Paul, is the one who ruined it. He was the one who um, was illogical. <clears throat> like, you, know, you can't confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and be saved. It's like, <clears throat> you know, you're not going to be raptured into the sky. You know, Jesus didn't walk on water. You know, he, he might not have even existed. So they, <coughs> oh dear, okay, well, <clears throat> they finally did mention methane in the uh, paper today, or recently. You know, this um, carbon trapped in the permafrost is released into the atmosphere as methane. Yeah, that's what I was telling you here in uh, uh, an academic study Alaska will keep melting, and they went. They've been, gone up five degrees, and and, uh, and then uh, so up, and they're they're going up a lot, and it's causing all this methane. Here they're calling it totally alarming. This is the um, they're saying we're gonna fry here in the Southwest. You know, all the forests are gonna burn up because the bark beetles. They kill the uh, trees, and then they're very susceptible to fires. And so, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, you can see the, the difference. The Agua Caliente lagoons um, are having trouble um, staying alive. They have to pump water into those. And then <clears throat> they said that uh, Sabino Canyon uh, stopped flowing, you know, so... Uh, you know, this this crazy weather. But, uh, well, here's an article about about uh, Ellen War- or, uh, Elizabeth Warren. And she just wrote a new book. And uh, in her old... She had another book, though, and I thought this was kind of interesting. She, uh, she wrote in this other book, um, The Two-Income Trap. Um, they said they went to a meeting with Hillary Clinton in 1998 to discuss bankruptcy protections for struggling middle-class families. Before Warren began her pitch, the First Lady snapped her head sharply to the side and called to no one in particular, Where's lunch? I'm hungry. The authors go on to criticize Clinton's coziness to Wall Street as a New York senator. So, you know, I'd rather have Elizabeth Warren for president than Hillary Clinton. And uh, another thing I don't like about Hillary Clinton is if you Google, um, if you Google Hil- Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, we came, we saw, we got them or something like that. And it's a video with like a 15 second video on YouTube and it shows Hillary being interviewed. She, she's sitting in a chair with her suit on and she's laughing and Push, you know, pushing her suit on, and say, and saying that um, that uh, we came, we saw, and we killed him, and she's talking about Gaddafi in in India in Libya there, and <clears throat> Gaddafi is one of the few people who believed in eliminating money. It seems like anybody who believes in eliminating money gets crucified, it, like Jesus told his disciples to go forth without money in their purses and said you can't serve God or money or either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. But the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and scoffed. So, you know, the um, smartest people, you know, Karl Marx believed in eliminating money and, you know, they've got this new book by this French guy they're making such a big deal out of, you know, but it's been said, you know, in Plato's Republic, the guardians would not touch gold and silver. 
and and uh, the you know Plato said that democracy is one level above tyranny, so that like um, it would go from an aristocracy to to a timocracy, I think, and I don't remember what that is. It's just I guess it goes on to the sun or something or to somebody, and then it goes to oligarchy and then uh, democracy and then tyranny, because um, you know there's just you know mob rule. That's what it is, and you know we really should have technocrats in control. It's like they had this this thing called. Uh, well, it's called it's called technocracy, and they believe that technocrats should run everything. And I think they partly also believe in in eliminating money or the or or else just silver. But you know, I don't think that uh, you know it's not money is not necessary. It's and barter isn't necessary either. You know, this modern machinery was supposed to make things easy for us, but uh, you know the way things are designed. It's not designed for people in mind. It's designed to get you to buy things and to rent things and to, you know, keep the economy going. But um, you know, it's like mindless, senseless growth. It's like a cancer, and it's poisoning the earth. And the whole planet could become extinct. And a lot of animals are. I think they're saying like 200 animals a year are going extinct and uh, you know you can see the polar bears are about ready to, to go extinct They're, the arctic ice up north is um, going to probably be free there's going to be uh, you know remember they kept talking about oh the northwest passage you know well, that'll be great we can save a lot of trouble shipping you know but the problem is that if there's no ice up there to reflect the sun, it's going to warm up the Arctic Ocean. And they're saying that now that they don't have all that ice on there, they're having larger waves, and it's causing the permafrost to melt even faster, and it's releasing all this methane. And uh, so a lot of people, like I said, you know, that article in that, um, in the new... New York Times Magazine about that guy who uh, used to be an Earth First guy, and he realized that you know this climate change has gone beyond uh, the tipping point, you know, and uh, there's not uh, much you can do about it. And uh, so I always thought, you know, they're just trying to keep the boat afloat. I always thought this not until you know just maybe few months ago because I didn't know about this uh, this this methane climate change thing it, I just found out about it about two months ago so <clears throat> I always thought that you know we're gonna run out of oil and then uh, you know there's no real substitute for oil and uh, and that would cause you know a huge collapse of the economy put a lot of people out of work and this and that you know and uh, so uh, then, you know, then, you know, the earth would still be here. I mean, not, not the earth, but, you know, the climate. And But I never realized that this temperature is going to go up even really high. And, you know, I never thought that, I thought, figure, you know, that maybe there'd be some place on earth that would be sustainable. But you saw that polar vortex that came down, you know, and uh, froze the northeast there. But so, like, the opposite could happen, too. And a real hot patch, like it did up in Kansas, you know, I um, I always, I used to joke, I mean, it's a joke now, but it wasn't before, that if, if it ever gets to be 130 here in Tucson, I would leave. And I didn't realize that if it gets to be 130, or is it 135, then people can't survive that, you know. It's just like... You can't survive that, and if it's if there's a lot of humidity and it's that hot, then then you're even going to go a lot faster. So there were a lot of people that died, you know, recently in Chicago. They had a heat spell there, <coughs> and right here in Tucson, we had a day. It was 104 out, and the air conditioning went out. The electricity went out. 
for about four hours. And wow, it was so darn hot. And um, people were all outside their houses. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I had to get in the shower and cool off. So, you know, they have an article on the uh, Internet. And in fact, it's my sister's website. She's, she's one of these people that believes in this peak oil thing and stuff like that. But she's also realizes that that we're going to have to bug out. We're going to have to, you know, head for the hills if something happens. So uh, she published an article. She reprinted it on her blog about where the best places to go would be to, um, you know, if if the you know if it hit the fan and um it was pretty interesting of course southern arizona or you know the what do they call that the sun corridor phoenix down to tucson here that's one of the worst places to be it's like and so is that los angeles corridor essentially the whole southwest like from new mexico all the way through parts of texas and oklahoma and then across nevada <clears throat> It's like the worst place to be. And um, I remember I used to drive back to Chicago, and I used to keep looking and looking, you know, where's the water? You know, if I ever had to flee Tucson on a bicycle or something, would I ever make it to the Midwest, you know, where they, they have a lot of corn and soybeans that you could live off of? <clears throat> but uh, so, you know, then they have... Um, it looks like, you know, the Pacific Northwest would be good. They, um, I think they said, um, well, the Heartland, you know, would be a good place. But um, anyway, let's see here. Big an art. They had an article here about these, these priests, these, you know, the Vatican. This is kind of, you know, I, I always kind of find it hard to believe, but... But man, look at this. He's, he's saying that um, the uh, 848 priests were dismissed between 2004 and 2013, and two me- 2,572 members had been disciplined for sexual abuse, putting children beyond their reach. And then since 1950, they've been... Uh, punished they had to pay 2.5 billion you know a bunch of uh, hypocrites you know what's this guy here he's um, uh, I don't know if he did anything wrong maybe it's his report but you know it kind of that's what kind of religion is that you know well you know if, if you had to uh, figure which we had an argument today well not an argument but a discussion today a friend of mine you know about which religion is better you know or worse and you know uh, he was saying oh yeah well yeah i'd stand up for the jews before i did the muslims and i said well yeah i think i'd have to kind of agree too you know and uh, so you know and then then you've got so many different kinds of Christians. You know, you've got these Mormons who are kind of just like brainwashed. And then you've got these people in North Korea who aren't much different. You know, I've always, I'd always liked to go to North Korea. They had just an article recently. This guy uh, came in. He This happens every once in a while. A, a tourist wants to, to defect to North Korea. And uh, I kind of think of it as like a large commune there. And uh, I think I would be able to make these people enthusiastic, you know, about being sustainable. And, uh, you know, but um, they have... Uh, same, with, same with Cuba, you know. It's like Cuba's a... I forget, a lot of people were talking about would that be a good place to go if things got really bad and uh because you know they're they're they don't have much export you know they're not not allowed to export to the United States or import any things so they've pretty much you know they they put those cars together they don't have any new cars they just keep using those same old ones they're pretty innovative down there they're so anyway uh, 
like in Russia and uh, some of these other European countries, you know, most of the food is grown locally, and you know they don't ship lettuce all the way on a hot shot train to New York. You know, that's full of refrigerator cars, and so like, um, you know, it's like this Earth is out of balance. And um, it's, you know, we're, it's just the whole problem would be the way we're living. And it's, you know, it's just so n not sociable to have, you know, our own little houses. It'd be nice if we could go hang out down at the local, uh, you know, community room or something where they have a swimming pool or something. And... Um, you know, this stupid gang graffiti. There's a, just saw some new gang graffiti in our neighborhood. I mean, man, I'll tell you, this world is so much different than it used to be. They have, here's another article I thought was really amazing about how much um, diabetes is on the rise. And uh, these are how many people would have it. I think, uh, gosh, how many total? Quite a lot, but you can see here. They have that many cases in India and in China and the United States. And then in 2035, they're predicting so many more cases of this. And it's it costs a lot of money to, to treat them, you know. And uh, I don't know how much of it's preventable. You know, I did look a bit, little bit about it, but, man, I tell you, it's not good to be unhealthy. I was doing painting painting today, like trying to get this house I have fixed up because cause the guy moved out and uh, got to find somebody else to move in. Oh yeah, here's an article about, about um, you know, the way things used to be. When, and, you know, like <clears throat> when I was growing up that, uh, you know, you didn't really need a college education to get anywhere. Here it is, the 70s. Remember I was telling you how great it was in the 70s. Well, the 60s and the 70s. But it got kept getting better. So percentage of high school graduates enrolling in college. It was the lowest it ever was back in uh, about 73 when I graduated from high school back around then. So uh, then it started going up and up and up. And there's more women in college now than there are men. Just kind of close, but not that far away. But, <clears throat> you know, back then you could get a good job in a factory somewhere, but not the factory I worked in. <laughs> well, maybe if you got promoted, but, you know, some of the factories, you know, the auto workers or something like that, and uh, you could... Uh, things have changed a lot. <clears throat> These... And, uh, you know, it's like, but then again, there's really no reason why we have to work this hard. The modern machine was supposed to make everything easy for us. Uh, but, um, you know, there's so many unnecessary jobs. You've got these cashiers, you've got people making unhealthy food, and you've got all this unhealthy food like McDonald's. And all the, think of how many unnecessary jobs there really are. <clears throat> and um, you can realize that money is totally unnecessary but and a lot of famous people like I have on my website there I've got the gospel of eliminating money a bunch of famous quotations from famous people who believed in eliminating money and like I was telling you they crucified people who you know they got Gaddafi and they got um, uh, Pol Pot was a guy who believed in eliminating money and Fidel Castro, <clears throat> and of course Jesus Christ believed in eliminating money, and he got crucified. And anyway, you can go to my website and you can find that there. So anyway, we'll uh, keep our eyes on the weather and uh, see when uh, you can get an idea about, you know, and start thinking about what you're going to do, you know, uh, stock up on corn and soybeans, get some goats, I don't know, enjoy a vacation. But uh, anyway, I, my name is Raquel, in order to buy or sell, 
You have to have the money to be a on your mind, and you hand. Bye.